Hello guys, come on in. This family has lived for years with only questions about the horrific murder of their daughter and sister, Faith Hedgepeth. I'm looking at my baby. Crime Watch Daily has brought together Faith's parents, Roland and Connie, and her brother and sister, Chad and Rolanda, in their home state of North Carolina. And now, for the first time, they might get some real answers, thanks to Arlo West, a forensic audio expert. Crime Watch Daily went to West in Portland, Maine, to get him to analyse the voicemail that may have recorded Faith's murder. Now, I'm bringing his findings to her family. This is one of the hardest things I've had to do, is going to be playing you this, and as the family having to listen to this. So I want to make sure that you're comfortable to hear it. It is a heartbreaking moment of torture listening to Faith scream. But Faith's family needs to know what happened and why. Two minutes and 59 seconds of terror that has haunted Faith's father for years. I have listened to this for like so 28 months now. Every week almost, sometimes I used to listen to it every day. I'm not crazy, I just uh, wanted to make sure of what I was hearing. Do you believe what you're listening to here is Faith being murdered? Yeah, I do. There's a critical moment of this recording here where, and it's, it's so difficult for me to read out even the transcript to you, but I, there's the words, I think she's dying and do it anyhow. I feel like Faith's being restrained at that point based on what I'm hearing there, okay. Listening, listening to that, do you recognize Faith's voice? When she says, ow, I know it's Faith. And I have no no doubt whatsoever. Faith's family cringing with every graphic, brutal detail. <laughs> There's the phrase, I can't believe you did it, Rosie. Well, what are your thoughts on that statement? <laughs> My initial impression is from that statement is that the female herself has done something to, at that point to Faith. Either has hit her in the head or whatever. To me, it sounds like three against one. What do you think, Connie? What's going through my mind is she was being hurt and battered, beaten, raped and abused, and nobody was there to help her. What are your thoughts to this point, Chad? I just can't help but think about the Chapel Hill Police Department right now. And wonder what they've been doing for the past three years. If it is what we're hearing, she, I mean, she's a she's a very brave girl, right? I know, she fought. She fought. And of course, she saw the bruises all over her head. And of course, her hands was, for me, the only thing that was recognizable. Despite three and a half long years, Faith's family still holds out hope that this case will be solved soon. And while we can't independently verify Arlo's analysis of the recording, they are hoping the voicemail will lead to the killer or at least bring a witness forward to at last achieve justice for Faith. We need that to be able to move on. It would mean the world? It would mean everything to us and a lot of people. A lot of people love Faith. A lot thoughts in the wake of having listened to, to that particular recording as well, Chad, are you hopeful that that might spark some new development in this case? If that doesn't help in some kind of way and, and move that needle, I don't know what will at this point. Chapel Hill Police have questioned more than a dozen people looking for Faith's killer. We've tried to talk to her roommate, Karina Rosario, who found Faith's body, and Rosario's former boyfriend, Eric Takoy Jones. Cops never charged either one with any wrongdoing, but Faith's family believes they may have some answers to solve the mystery behind Faith's murder. Karina did not respond to repeated requests for an interview with Crime Watch Daily. Eric did reply to our producer on Facebook when we asked him to talk to us on camera. He writes, honestly, I don't want nothing to do with that and I don't need that kind of attention while I'm in grad school. My lawyer doesn't think it's a good idea and wants your contact information. But we desperately wanted to talk to Eric, so I tried again to speak with him at his mother's home in Chapel Hill, where he is reportedly living. 
I was just hoping I might be able to have a really quick chat with you if you had a moment. I need for you to get off my property right now. Absolutely. Eric's not here to have a chat, ma'am. So, you would have just seen there, we've made an attempt to speak to Eric. Uh, his mother has asked us in uh, no uncertain tone to get straight off the property, which we're about to do. We should also stress that we also reached out to Eric and through his attorney. So, I guess that's where we leave it. But memories of their loving daughter will never leave the Hedgepeth family. Roland actually goes back to the apartment directly below Faith's and stands in the bedroom underneath where his beautiful daughter's body was found, desperately trying to keep some connection. I've been there known you for a short time, but I can pretty confidently say I've never seen a father with greater love for a daughter. Tell me why you go and stand in the, in the apartment, in the bedroom below where she was killed. What do you do in those quiet moments with her? That's where her lifeblood was spilt, okay? Her last breath was, was, was breathed right above it. What do you say to her when you stand in that room? I tell her I'm sorry I wasn't there for her. And Roland has pledged not to rest until the killer is behind bars. Now, while Eric wasn't prepared to talk to us at his mother's home, he did decide to follow us in his car for several miles before eventually driving off. We should say that we did reach out to the Chapel Hill PD for an on-camera comment for our story. They declined. We do know a new lead investigator has taken on this case and we will, of course, follow it very closely and bring you any new developments. Now, if you have any information at all about the murder of Faith Hedgepeth, you can submit a tip at our website, that is crimewatchdaily.com, or you could call or text our toll-free tip line. That number is 1844 800 crime.